In this video, I'm going to show you how to remove the background of these two graphics in a more manual fashion. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes if you use an automated service like ClipDrop, the result is really poor if the AI artwork is more complex. So in this video, I'm going to use Photoshop to do this manually. And don't worry if you don't have access to Photoshop, you can alternatively use Photop, which is a free web browser based alternative. And I'll have a link to both of these in the description down below. Now, if you're using this manual method to remove backgrounds, then I would definitely recommend upscaling your graphics first before you go into Photoshop or Photo P. I've made a few videos in the past about different free upscalers, comparing them. One of my favorites is Upscale, but if you have a slow computer or a slow laptop, then you might want to try out dgb.lol. Upscale, I've got it open right here. All I have to do is drag and drop my files into the middle, and then I can hit Upscale at the bottom, and they'll be saved at a higher quality into the same folder where I've just opened them from. And Upscale, I will have a link to in the description as well. It's something you have to download and install on your device. So here we go. I've opened the first graphic in Photoshop. By the way, these graphics are not my own. I've not created them. I'm just using them as an example. I found them on Ideogram, and I will leave a link in the description. I think these are good examples because they are quite difficult. Um, this one specifically because of all of this sort of gold spray around the edges. And as you can see, there's a bar right here that pops up that says remove background. So let's just try that to give you an example of the struggle with this. It looks quite good or decent at first glance, but if I add a background color to this, you will quickly see that, yeah, there we go. I mean, it's still got a lot of white right here and it's, it's not done a very good job to be honest. So that was the automated background removal of Photoshop and it's not really acceptable. So what I'm going to do is I'll remove that mask right here and show you a few alternative methods. Now, one thing that you can do is trace around the edge right here, this black stroke around the text and just completely get rid of the, the gold spray. I would recommend just ignoring this around the edges. Like there's no point of trying to remove every bit of white in between these gold flakes you're never gonna be able to do it. It's too difficult and it wouldn't look good when printed on a shirt either. So in this case, we'll have to try and sort of cut out the actual text with the black stroke outline. And you can do that with the polygonal lasso tool over here. So you might find it hidden behind the lasso tool if you click on hold on there and go polygonal lasso tool. Then um, we can zoom in. I'm zooming in whilst holding down Alt, by the way, on my keyboard. And when I hold space, I can then click and drag around to move around the canvas. So Alt or Option, zoom and space and click and drag is what I'm mainly using right here to navigate. And uh, yeah, let's just start off by clicking around this black stroke. This is quite a time consuming method. That's why I'm probably going to speed this bit up. But sometimes that is what you have to deal with if you have more complex graphics and there's no sort of automated way to do it properly. I'll still show you an alternative way to do it that doesn't use this lasso tool, which I find the second method a little bit easier and a little bit less time consuming. But you know, if you wanted to, you can do it like this. And some people might prefer this method. So I still wanted to show it. And by the way, I am not going to be like 100% exact and I won't use these stars. I will just leave those out as well. Just keep clicking and building a shape around this text. So there we go. Now everything is highlighted in this selection and I can now highlight or click on the design in the layers panel and then click on layer mask down here. And there we go. Now all that gold spray has been removed and this looks a lot cleaner on any color really. There's still a few little imperfections that we could clean up, but I'm going to show you that in a little bit. I do think this method is okay, but there is definitely uh, better options. So let me copy this and delete the mask again, just so I can show you the alternative way of doing this. Right, so the method I prefer uses the quick selection tool, which you can find on your toolbar. It might be hidden behind the object selection tool. And with this quick selection tool, if we have a design selected, we have, first of all, we have like a circle. That's the size of a brush. We can increase that with the opening and closing bracket. What you want to do essentially is you want to paint over all of the areas you want to be included in your selection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the edge right here, like so, and try and catch all of the black. If it selects too much, like in this case, it selected the, the brown as well. I'm going to make the, 
the brush smaller and then I'm going to hold down alt on my keyboard which changes the plus symbol to a minus symbol as you can see and now we can kind of take this selection back to where we wanted it to be. Sometimes you only have to click once for it to select a whole lot of new black or whichever color you're trying to select. So you don't have to click and hold a lot. You sometimes just have to go around the edge and keep clicking individual times. Also remember that you want to select the stuff in the middle. So like in this case, it's actually, it's not selected the gold for me. So I need to go over that as well. Just make sure it doesn't go too far on the edges. In this case, it's done a good job. And let's carry on around the edge. I like to sort of cover the edge first because with that you kind of focus on the most important stuff and then you can always paint over the middle part later and here we've got a bit more to select right that's all the edge done let's just make sure everything in the middle is selected if it's not 100 perfect you can always like refine after and fix any little imperfections but now if i look at this i think this selection looks pretty much the same as we had it before with the lasso tool as in that all of the black stroke and what's inside is selected so again we can go back to the layers panel make sure that the right design layer is selected that you want to add the mask to and then click on this symbol right here and there we go that's been cut out that was quite a bit quicker and now let me show you how to sort of finesse this or refine it a little bit because if we zoom in the edge doesn't look perfect it has kind of a little bit of a weird ghosting effect outline going on right here so let's fix the edge to begin with i'll show you a few tricks here what you can do is head to properties i believe yeah so your properties panel if you can't see it you can go to window and you should have properties right here as an option and in this panel we want to click select and mask let's change the view to uh, overlay there we go that's usually quite a good one and going to turn this up as well and the opacity now what we can do is first of all increase the smooth slider right here that makes sure you don't have too many jagged edges um, it's more of a smooth outline then i would also bring up the contrast quite a bit there we go that's made it look a lot cleaner already um, but we still have some sort of weird colors around the edge what we can do there is we can shift the edge backwards let's go with minus 100 percent see what it does there we go so it's gotten rid of some of the edge right there and um, you kind of play around and see which works best for you and i think that looks pretty good to me now the outline is a lot cleaner and i can click ok down here there we go that looks neat and now if you wanted to kind of clean up this stroke a little bit because it isn't perfect and there is some wonky bits right here you can click into the actual mask in the layers panel and you can use for example the lasso tool again right here the polygonal lasso tool and you could draw some shapes over this to kind of clean it up so but hard to describe but i'm trying to kind of cut this part out you can do that by i believe you need to have black on the bottom color right here and then whilst having the mask selected you can hit control or command backspace and there we go that's just deleted that bit of excess and i could do the same up here perhaps draw a shape like this control backspace and there we go that's deleted that but you could do the reverse if you wanted to fill anything in i think there was a star right here but let's just test it if i hit x it will swap the colors around so now white is the color on the back control backspace yeah there was a star here um, if you wanted to fill this in with black you could for example use the brush tool and just create a new layer and then paint over it with a black brush just make sure that the actual brush is set to hardness 100 and now we have that filled in right here as well so i hope that makes sense it's a quick way to quickly fix some imperfections you could also paint over little paint splashes like that that are not looking right so yeah this is obviously quite time consuming and you don't have to go as in depth but i wanted to show you all the different ways that you can kind of tidy this up in a more manual way and the options that you have with something like photoshop or photo p so that's the first design and a bit of a walkthrough i would still go around the edge a little bit and tidy up right here but i think you get the gist of how to do it now so let's move on to the second graphic this is quite a cool vintage sunset design but it's on a black background and those tend to be harder when you're trying to remove the background for some reason it's easier with white don't ask me why but in this case let's once again try the photoshop 
preset right here of the removing background. By the way, the graphics that I'm using, I will leave a link to them in the description. You can find them on Ideogram. You can leave a like and also use the prompt if you want to create similar graphics as well. So those links will be in the description. As you can see, that didn't do a very good job. I want all of the black to be removed ideally, including these lines and the texture effect and the cat. It is quite difficult to remove these kind of texture effects, but we're going to do our best. So that didn't do very well. What I would do in this case is use the magic wand tool, which is in the same section as the quick selection tool right here that we used earlier. So find the magic one tool, select your graphic in the layers panel. And then what this does essentially is any color that you click on, it selects that same color in either an isolated area, if you have contiguous turned on like so, or if you turn contiguous off, it will select that color across the entire design or similar colors. Like it's selected some of the ears right here because that blue tone is similar to this one. You can also decide how similar the color should be. So if I turn the tolerance down to five, for example, and click on this blue again, it's only going to select things at the bottom and not even fully because there's even a bit of difference right here on the edge. So the lower the tolerance, the less it's going to actually select. If you turn this up very high to like 60, probably going to select most of the blue that we see on this design. Yeah, selecting almost all of the ears right here as well, even though it's not exactly the same color. So if you do this with the background now, and click on the black, you can see it's doing quite a good job with my current settings of selecting all of the background, including a lot of these textures right here. What it hasn't done is, well, first of all, has it selected these whiskers? Yeah, it's selected quite a bit of these whiskers as well. So let's turn this down a bit, maybe to about uh, 40, click on it again. Okay, what it hasn't done is it's not selected this part right here of this little texture. What you can do is turn contiguous back on and then if we hold down shift, you will see a little plus symbol up here. Now we can add to the selection with the magic wand like that. So you could go in and refine your selection a little bit and add a few bits in, but I wouldn't worry too much about having every little piece of this texture right here selected. I wouldn't obsess over it. The main thing is that most of the background is being selected and you still retain some of the detail because the higher the tolerance, the less detail it's going to retain in your graphic. That's important. So you have to find a good balance between selecting all of the background color, but not losing all of the detail, if that makes sense. Now that we have this selection, we can click on select inverse and then add a layer mask again. And there we go. I think that looks pretty decent. I can add a, a background color to this so we can look at it um, kind of how it would be on a t-shirt. Um, let's do a dark navy. I think that's a pretty decent job. If we zoom in, then especially if I, if I change it to white, we are still going to see some imperfections with the black right here. You can refine that a little bit, but I don't think there's a way to 100% remove all of them unless you want to go in and like actually manually draw over them, which takes forever. But let's refine this a little bit right here by clicking on the actual mask, going to the properties panel again and hitting select and mask because we can change a few settings right here. You don't want to use the smooth feature as much in this case because it actually yeah, brings back the black. So only bring that up a tiny bit if so. And the contrast, you can increase that. Um, that will make it look a little bit better. And then shift edge, we can turn that down again to about minus 100. Bear in mind that might get rid of some of the details, I believe. Yeah, it's gotten rid of a lot of the sunglass details right here, which is unfortunate. So let's go back a step, Control Z, now select and mask. Let's again, increase the contrast and shift the edge back just a little bit. So yeah, we are going to lose out on some detail, but we're also going to make the black less prominent. So as you can see, it's not 100% perfect, but if it's printed on a dark color, this will definitely look really good. Obviously you wouldn't want to offer it on something like a light gray anyway. So yeah, that's about as good as I can get it. I think with uh, Photoshop, if you know a better way to tidy this up, then let me know in the comments down below. But I think this is definitely acceptable if used on something like a dark navy, for example. And there we go, that's both of those graphics with the background removed in Photoshop. I hope it also works the same in Photop, or hope you can get a similar result there. If you like freebies, then make sure to check out this video next, where I share nine resources and tools that you can use for print on demand totally for free.